decided it's time we move forward and hopefully the courts will catch up one of these days. It is a move that definitely got the ball rolling on marriage equality here in New Mexico. So the question is, will that ball keep rolling? The latest on the Donia Anna County Clerk's decision to give marriage licenses to same-sex couples is coming up in just a moment. But first at 531, a very good morning to you and welcome to KRQE New this morning. I'm Matt Morrow. It is Thursday, the 22nd day of August. We're going to get to the latest on same-sex marriage and reaction from all around the state in just a minute. But first, we do want to get a quick check of your forecast with meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning. Starting off in the 70s this morning, feeling really nice and pleasant out. Humidity down a bit, 43%. So we are starting to dry things out a little bit. Storm chances for Albuquerque really just not happening for us today, though it could change a little bit for the weekend. Here's a breakdown of the day. Low to mid 70s through 9 o'clock will warm quickly and we'll watch for clouds to develop over the Sandias, but for the most part, more sunshine for Albuquerque today. 85 at noon, topping out in the low 90s. A wetter weekend ahead. I'll have the breakdown for you coming up in a few minutes. Well, developing this morning at 532, the Donia Andy County Clerk makes a historic move and issues marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Lynn Ellens, whom you just heard from right here, issued 40 of these licenses yesterday. Attorney General Gary King says he's not going to stop Ellens or any other county clerks in the state from doing this, but he warns things could change once the courts weigh in on the issue. I think this is the risk, and I want to make sure that everybody understands the risk, is that uh, because the law is not certain in New Mexico, because our Supreme Court hasn't ruled on it yet. The Attorney General there is in the odd position of upholding what he considers a law that bans gay marriage, while at the same time asking the state Supreme Court to rule that law as being unconstitutional. The High Court is expected to make a ruling whether to consolidate a handful of court cases and hand them off to a district court judge. It's a move that could speed up the court process. Now, legislators who support gay marriage say this whole issue should be up to the people. Governor Susana Martinez agrees that it should be up to the people, but has said that she believes marriage should be between a man and a woman. Now, the same issue, giving marriage licenses to same-sex couples, also came up back in March, you remember. That's when Santa Fe's city attorney, Gino Zamora, said it was his legal opinion that state law technically allows gay marriage. He and Mayor David Koss urged county clerks all around the state to start issuing the licenses, but... The Santa Fe County Clerk has not done that and said yesterday that what happening down in Donia Anna County isn't going to change for the time being. The Bernalillo County Clerk is also reviewing the situation, but so far is not issuing licenses to gay couples. And of course, this is not the first time a county clerk in New Mexico has issued same-sex marriage licenses. In 2004, Victoria Dunlop, then Sandoval County Clerk, issued more than 60 marriage licenses to same-sex couples before Attorney General Patricia Madrid declared the licenses invalid. She said same-sex marriage was banned under state law because the license applications specify a man and a woman. A judge agreed and ordered Dunlop to stop issuing the licenses. Many couples who got their marriage licenses in Donia Anna County yesterday had been waiting for years, even decades, to do this. Take the Brown Abkiss family. The two women have been waiting 11 years for this day. Well, it's very emotional. It just means that, um, that our home state recognizes us as a couple and as a family. The first people that came in said they'd been waiting 31 years to do this. Later on, I got a couple that came in and said, we've been waiting 43 years to do this. Obviously, it's time not to wait anymore. Jen Roper and Angelique Newman have been waiting for more than two decades. Jen was diagnosed with brain cancer and only has a short time to live, so she can't travel. With the help of the ACLU of New Mexico, the American Civil Liberties Union, the two filed an emergency order to get a marriage license from the Santa Fe County Clerk. They have a hearing on this that is set for Monday. Well, despite being against gay marriage, the New Mexico Conference of Catholic Bishops told us that it is the job of state legislators and the courts to decide this. In a statement, the bishops say, quote, the tradition of marriage between one man and one woman comes to us not only from the Judeo-Christian tradition, but it has been witnessed in cultures throughout the world for many millennia. All right, make sure you stay with us here on News 13 for continuing coverage on New Mexico's gay marriage debate. It's going to be around for quite some time. You can get it online anytime at krqe.com. Well, we're just about six weeks away from going to the polls and deciding who's going to be Albuquerque's next mayor. That officially happens on October 8th. And last night was the first time the incumbent mayor, Albuquerque uh, Mayor R.J. Berry, met his opponents face-to-face. -face. 
former city councilor and administrator Pete Dinelli, and former Albuquerque police sergeant Paul Hay. And the minimum wage that voters approved last November, one of the big issues here. Minimum wage was never meant to be a living wage. Minimum wage was meant to get you introduced to the working force, to learn the ins and outs, to show up on time. The real answer is, is that the cost associated with the minimum wage increase is going to be passed on to the consumer. I haven't read a single report that says it's going to destroy jobs. And I think the debate comes into what is the best way to raise someone's place, you know, if they want to financially raise their, their, their position financially. My personal feeling is, is through workforce training. Early voting sites will open for voters in Albuquerque in less than two weeks. Well, former Albuquerque firefighter who used to work for a drug cartel broke down as a judge handed down his two and a half year sentence yesterday. Steve Chavez pled guilty to shuffling more than 350 grand in drug money in and out of bank accounts. Chavez was trying to avoid federal reporting requirements for deposits and withdrawals of more than $10,000. He cried in court and said, quote, he was beyond remorseful for his bad decisions. But the judge did not go easy on him, saying Chavez failed as a role model and has become the face of a highly publicized crime. You know, he's right. To those who have much or been given much, much is going to be expected of them, for better or worse. And Mr. Chavez was sort of the face of this case. The judge was right. And, um, you know, he has to pay a punishment for what he did. Besides going to prison, Steve Chavez also has to pay $182,000 to the federal government. Seven others involved in a drug ring have pled guilty. Six others charged in it have pled not guilty, and one has not been caught. Happening now at 537, we have been waiting for it all year long. And finally, yes, a green chili is here. Just thinking about it is enough to make your mouth water even this early in the morning. So with the drought and a fairly good monsoon season, particularly in July, we were wondering how this crop is. So we sent News 13's David Romero out to Chile Traditions in Northeast Albuquerque to find out. David, I see fire behind you. I got a feeling there's some chili there roasting as well. Mm, can't you just smell it, Matt? <laughs> We're on the corner of Wyoming and Montgomery here in Northeast Albuquerque. The boys here at Chili Traditions are already cranking it out. Take a look over my shoulder. You can see how it's looking. And this is the good stuff. And the reason we have the good stuff is because of the rains. But that rain can be a double-edged sword. Now, the rain is good because growers say it produced a bigger crop earlier in the season. And some even say they helped make it a better product overall versus using the groundwater. But now, at the end of the growing season, too much rain is not good. The reason, some of the last plants producing the chili sit baking in the heat of the day. And of course, with pools of standing water around them, they can actually end up boiling the plant. Yeah, that's making it worthless. And of course, one of the growers in Hatch told us that he lost about two acres of chili because it boiled in the hot sun. Now that's something that takes a bite out of the crop and the old pocketbook. Still, this year's crop is proving to be more profitable than one in recent years. And that's, of course, again, thanks to the rains. But sellers and growers agree everything should be done and taken in moderation. Too much rain at this time of the year is not good. Drought is actually good for chili. It doesn't want a whole lot of water. It wants to come, you know, be dry. It wants to have that dry ground and stuff. Also, it doesn't spread disease when it's dry. When you don't have all that moisture and stuff, you don't get disease. And of course, as you heard from Ken there, you can see Ken live right now cooking that green chili. And of course, uh, this is proving to be a very, it's going to be proving to be a very profitable year for sellers and growers because whether you like it roasted or mm -hmm. Raw, it's a good year for green chili. Back to you, Matt. Raw chili, all right, David. I expect you to bring some of that back. Chris and I are salivating over here. We're hungry. It's great, it's delicious. Okay, we're glad to see the crop is good. Thank you, David. Just so you know, the peak time for buying chilies in the next few weeks, the folks at Chili Traditions told us that they see a peak during Labor Day weekend. That's coming up next week. Yeah, already the official end of summer, just a word of the wise. So get your chili fix sooner than later and before the masses. Man, that does look good. Like chili with breakfast, too.